Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab, where I love to take thrift store finds and make them over here on the channel and share the process and my vision with you all of what I do to these items. I don't know about you all, but I have a love of terracotta pots aged new i can age them if they're new but i have this beautiful patina one and then this is probably like a basket that would have went to some type of a scale but just a, a random find since my terracotta pot has some beautiful patina i would like to give some beautiful patina to this very I mean, it's a nice metal, but I'd like to give it a little more, more age. And I have been having fun mixing the Dixie Bells patina. So today I'm going to be mixing the copper and the iron on this little guy. So just random spots here and there, as much or as little as you want it to be. Now I have some stencil brushes that from the were from the Dollar Tree store. And these are great for patinas because they have really been used and abused and are flared out. So I as, as you see, I'm doing more of a dabbing motion, not a brushing motion, because I don't want to wipe off the material. I want to get the material on there. And when it comes to like rust and things aging over time, it is kind of built up on the surface area. As soon as I get, get my copper color on, I'm going to right on top of it, do the iron patina. Like I said, right on top of it, right over in random places, just all over this metal. I'm not gonna let my patina paint dry. Right on top of that, I'm gonna go ahead and add the patina and the green spray. I want them to kind of run together. That's why I want to leave my paint wet. I have an idea that I might add one of these little ceramic birdies that have been in my stash. Now they're super shiny, and at the moment I don't have any of the bonding agent on hand. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and cut the string off. I don't think I'm going to hang this one, but I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum's enamel paint to paint these up as a primer. So I would like these to have a cement look. So I'm going to start off with using the Little Lamb in the Fusions paint, which is a beautiful gray color. And why that paint is still wet, I'm going to go ahead and add some of the Victorian lace right on top of it. Kind of keep on blending it until I kind of have it covered and has more of a cement look. So that made an amazing patina. Now I did spritz and I forgot to show you that I did do a little bit of the blue on here also to get that yummy turquoise color. I don't know where that filming went. I am so sorry. But yeah, so that's why you have the rust color and then you have that little bit of turquoise here and there. It's just every product and every time you add it and every metal seems to just do something a little bit different. But I'm sealing it in with some weather defense. My clear coat is dry. Look at that amazing rust patina on this little piece. So I want my terracotta pot to be tipped over. I just think that's just, there's some salvaged look of that that just looks absolutely gorgeous. And I want to add a pop of green. So these are some um, succulents that you buy at that place on Hobby Lobby that it they have all those the little stems at so to make it fit and I don't really care for bending these over because it kind of will push it out I'm going to go ahead and cut some of that excess stem off some good nippers will help just something about that pop of green that terracotta pot and that rusty patina I it's just and it's just this is so simple this is just a simple little display so now i'm just going to go ahead and add one of the little birdies now i did end up tweaking the little birdie just a little bit i thought um at first he was he's just cement so like i really would like to tie him in together just a little bit more than that so i'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the turquoise color to him just so he blends that little hint of turquoise and the metal piece will just tie this whole piece together
My next project is this scoop. Though I love the vintage version of the scoop. This is one I picked up at the thrift store for minimal and I think we can make it over to look old but I loved the detail on that handle. Yes you guessed right I'm going to be using some more of that Dixie Bell patina and for this one I'm just going to use the iron. So all I did was wipe this off with a Clorox wipe make sure that it was nice and dry. So I did pre-clean these pieces just didn't show you that on camera. So I'm just doing that same dabbing technique with that very used and abused stencil brush which is perfect. Those flared out old brushes are perfect for this type of patina just to dab it on. So I'm just going to fill up as much of the space. I don't, I'm learning that I don't have to completely cover the item. I don't, it needs to be that perfectly imperfect to have that real patina look. I got the coverage I think I wanted. You, you, it's always a guesstimate, isn't it? So now right when that iron patina paint is still wet, I'm going to spray right on top of that some of the patina in the green spray. So yep, right on top of it. And luckily it has those edges that it can sit upside down. So then I let this dry for about 15 minutes and now I'm just going to add a little bit of the blue. That's why I said I don't know why I didn't, I didn't see that blue early <laughs> where that filming went. But, the, you know, it is what it is sometimes. that Maybe I didn't hit the camera when I thought I was filming. But, yes, I let this dry for about 15 minutes. Um, I find that if I give it a few minutes in between, it um, really gets more of that different definition in the colors. going to see the turquoisey color on this piece because I did not apply the copper patina paint. That's when you see that turquoise. But adding the two on top of each other gives a variation in the rust color as you may notice. So I'm going to get this sealed in using some of that Weather Defense Metal Spray. I'm amazed by the variation of patinas that you can create using this product. Oh my gosh, I am just having so much fun. And if you're a regular on my channel, you kind of know that. So now I want to set this on its side. So my first terracotta pot that I thought I was going to use, just it just isn't big enough. I And I really do want to set it off to the side. You know, we all have an idea in our mind. So I'm gonna upgrade. I have quite the hoard. I cannot pass these up at a sale for anything. So I don't wash them or anything because I don't want to wash off any of the patina. All I do is take a dry paintbrush and dust them off to the best that I can. So that one's a little bit better. That one's a little bit bigger. I thought about layering them, but I'm like still in my vision, I want it to sit off to the side. This is actually a cement piece. So for the weight that I need to sit that off the side, this little birdie duck goose geese i don't know really what it is at the moment it's a little bit it may be a little scary looking but that's what we do we create things and make them beautiful so now i'm playing around with what greenery i want to add into here so i have some of the hobby lobby stems but i'm not positive on that greenery quite yet and i know i'm going to need to do something with this bird <laughs> i'm going to call him a bird um because it just it isn't that pop that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to dry brush. I'm not going to completely cover this up by any means. All I'm going to do is dry brush some of the Victorian Lace Fusion Paint on here to see um, what kind of patina it creates. Kind of more of a cement looking than that um, truly painted piece. I mean, it's really cool and it's nice and heavy. I love the long neck on it. I like the red beak, but there was just something that made it a little bit scarier that I knew that it would need a transformation. I'm loving that the dry brush technique on there, but it's a little too white now. It doesn't really match the patinas that are all going on. So I'm just taking some of the fusion antiquing glaze and going over the entire piece, just giving that little bit of dirt age to it. And actually, since my Victorian lace paint is still wet, the wet glaze is actually removing bits and pieces of the white paint to really give it that beautiful aged look. 
have the weight I needed to keep this off to the side. So loving this look. Love the age of all the patinas. Um, I think I'm not going to use this stem. I kind of changed my mind. I really love the look of baby grass when it comes to the patina. The thing about the baby grass, this is a hanging stem from Hobby Lobby, is it has all those different variations of green along with a little bit of that brown to give it that aged look. So it really ties a piece like this in together. Even though I'm putting this pot off to its side, I'm going to go ahead and add some floral foam along with some of this crinkled up paper grass just to hide the floral foam so I have something to stick some of the metal stems into. want that grass to fill up a little bit like it's been tipped on its side and the plants grown around the objects over time. So I'm going to go ahead and let it spread out over the top, underneath, you know, really give it that salvaged look. To get the grass to go upwards, I'm going to go ahead and use some hot glue on just some of the individual sprays just to get it to be a little bit more full. I don't think this is going to distract from that patina of the terracotta pot. I just kind of thought that there was that empty space there that I needed to fill it in. So I have this little burgundy star that's just kind of wonkily cut, but the red of it matches the beak of the birdie, but it's a little too red. It's too burgundy. It's too crisp. So I'm going to go ahead and take some antiquing wax, the brown. There's a difference between the antiquing wax and the antiquing glaze. Two different colors, two different products. So this is this is going to transform this into a little bit of more blue. And then I'll probably end up dabbing just a, a little dry brush of the white on top of it just to tie it in with the white patina that I have going on here. this piece not gorgeous this is actually heavy metal not like a rock band it but it is heavy metal so it's got some nice weight to this so you know it was a high-end piece and very awkward to try to get this tag off good good placement I'm not sure how they got it in there but good placement so they definitely didn't use one of those um, pricing guns to get it in there so I'm as I said I'm just cleaning the pieces off with just some Clorox wipes and I know I have a little bit of problem. I like to take every single tag off. You know, you're making this piece over, you're making it your own. Do you need a China sticker on there? No, you do not. <laughs> Nothing says I flipped this item like leaving a China sticker on. You don't want them to think China made your creation, so get that sticker off. Uh huh. Yep, yep, yep. Uh huh. Yep, yep. I am going to. <laughs> There's just something about aging a piece that I just I can't stop. It's a personal taste. Either you like the crisp new of everything or you like to have it aged. And that is just me. I like to have that perfectly and perfect of age. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the rust patina to this one. And those little areas, like if you left this out in the weather, you know, a lot of the joints and a lot of the um, where two pieces come together, that's the area that naturally would rust. So that's where I'm trying to get. And I don't, you don't want to forget about the inside since, you know, you're doing the whole piece. Just you want to make the patina inside and out the entire piece. So for this one, I'm just going to be just using the grease, green spray just all over. I do notice that even if you spray on somewhere that you don't have the patina paint, it still does react with the metal. So that's the neatness of the spray. I'm 
just gave this just a little bit more character. See how the bottom, even though I didn't put it on that bottom, just around the edges because I was going to be putting stuff over it, that spray still changed that metal just a hair. It just took it from that brown and just added a little bit more character. And this is why I wanted it to have patina because I'm still on my kick of using these patinaed aged terracotta pots. And look at that fit. It was almost like crying for that to be in there. I went ahead and stuffed this with some foam, some of that crinkled up brown grass. And now we're going to add some floral. Well, yes, these are floral. This is some beautiful brown age stems from Hobby Lobby and I they are probably now next to the Walmart lavender one of my favorites I like I've always liked baby's breath but a lot of times they do really green green stems that don't go with the patinas I like to do so when I came across these I was like oh be still my heart they are right down my alley so yes I'm just cutting them off from the stem and then sticking them in there as full as I can get it could just leave that pot as is but hello <laughs> I love to use up my stash that is what it is for and these flowers these florals from Hobby Lobby coordinate with this baby's breath so well I'm gonna go ahead and use a few of these so I think I'll be able to take this little pot that has some age to it and squeeze it in there and make it fit also um i can't believe that i was able to do that so we're gonna go ahead and put that one in there i think i got another one that i can put on the other side um haven't cleaned this one out yet so let's give it a quick dusting before editing it in. i don't know i am just kind of creating I, you have the, your vision but i'm always like always creating as i go because sometimes some of my ideas don't work the way I think they should. So yeah, this one, <laughs> it's a nice tight fit, but if I can squeeze it in there, I can get it. But I love the way that these florals coordinate with each other. So I think I'm just gonna have them standing upright just freely. I'm not gonna hot glue them in or anything like that. Um, you could change them out if you needed to. I just, there's just something about that floral. But they were a little bit too long. It's better to have too much than not enough so I could always cut them down. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple little more salvage pieces. This is just a random block, and I thought the F went well for the word flower, um, though I don't think it's going to, I, of course, I'd want it to fit into that little pot, but that that's not going to happen. See, like I said, just because you envision it doesn't mean that it's going to happen. But I do think I um, might have another rusty, crusty star. Here's some random items I'm going to put together. I know probably doesn't really look like much right now. So this is an old little board. You can definitely tell this is vintage, so I don't want to sand that patina off. And this is actually new. This is like a, a light cage, and it's actually rubberized, new with stickers. And yes, I have a vision. I do have a vision with these terracotta pots today. I'm going to go ahead and get all these tags removed. Sometimes easy, sometimes hard, but today it's not, not too bad. And if you wonder if this 
patina paint stays on. Man, I really have to scrub my hands hard. <laughs> really soak them to get that patina paint off. So it is good and on there, y'all. So yep, 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 yep. I am going to go ahead and age this too. Now this is going to be a little bit different because it has that bright, bright brass at the top of it. So I'm going to, I'm going to run the copper color down, but I really am going to emphasize it on the top of this. So still that same dabbing technique um, right along the edges, right along where it all gathers together. And then right on top of that, while it's still wet, I'll go ahead and add the iron paint right on top of it. So I like my piece of wood to look a little bit more savage. I love the little legs in this. This has been in my stash way too long. And if I sanded it down smooth to get those cut marks, it would take that beautiful aged of the patina off the top of it. So I don't want to do that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use some of the Funky Junk's palette stencils. And I thought that would just be fun like it was made from a salvaged piece of wood. Just have the lid off of the Fusions coal black paint. I have a um, paper plate or styrofoam paint on my side because I just want to do a very minimal paint on my Dollar Tree makeup sponge. Just small little dabs, hardly any paint whatsoever. If you have too much paint on there, um, it's going to go underneath your stencil, but a little dab will do you and it, it goes really far. You just want to make this look like it was pressed and printed on there and not necessarily written or colored on. Adding the two different patina paints along with the two different patina sprays. Oh my goodness. And yeah, this was a rubberized metal piece. Yeah, it was rubberized, but look at how it makes it just look like it was metal. So now I'm going to start grouping my little area all together. And this, I saw this at a thrift store, I'm like, Pottery Barn, yeah, I'll pick that up <laughs> for minimal. It's a beautiful fern. So now I want to see, I'm not doing anything to that pot. It has a, some nice age to it. I, you don't always have to make everything over. So now I'm trying to see, I'm like, uh, can I make all this fern fit? Will the pot and the plant and the, uh, will this go all the way, the cage go all the way down to the bottom? With a little bit of coaxing, I think I can do it. So I get the cage all the way to the bottom and then I'll start pulling and working some of the fern out through the cage and I'm really trying to twist it that you're not seeing the bottom of the leaf that you're seeing the top of the leaf so yeah I just want to make it look like this cage was always on there and the fern grew around it to finish this little display off and to keep with my salvage theme I've got going on here I have this little random salvage find though um I like it, I think, but now I have another little, I just literally, why my patina was drying, y'all, I ran to my local Goodwill, and I cannot believe I found this little birdie, and I don't need any, I don't need to do anything to him, yeah, for a couple bucks, hello, God, those are those God wings moments, because I hadn't really thought about what extra I wanted to add to this, but I do know, now that I have the little birdie, that I want to age, um, I know the little salvage wooden piece is aged, but it's really gray and it kind of just is fading away now. But I know if I take my sander to it, I'm in the hopes that a lot of these salvage pieces were some for some reason always painted white first. So if I sand it off, maybe I can get down to some white.
would you just look at this very fun blue birdcage? I love that color. I think it is so much fun. A fake drawer door, it doesn't open, but it does open for the top. And I'm not going to do anything to it. I know you're all surprised. Nope, I'm leaving it that fun blue color. But I am going to do a little something to this thrifted birdie. So it does kind of match, but, you know, I, I still want to make them over. So my first idea was I had this random salvage piece, which is probably a foot off of something that had a metal piece. So to get it to lay flat, I need to take that bottom piece off because I'd like to set my birdie on top of it. And I'm going to go ahead and make this little birdie over. So I'm going to start by coloring him with just some of the Victorian lace by Fusion. But for this one, I'm really going to cover it up, not like the cement one I did earlier. Um, the cement is a different texture, so the way it t takes the paint. And this little birdie is resin, so it's gonna. it would have been really hard just to dry brush. It's just funny how different materials paint so much differently. And while my paint is still semi-wet, I want it to look a little bit more cement. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of the Fusion's Little Lamb. I just love that name, Little Lamb. Anyway, I'm going to add the Little Lamb color to this to give it more of a cement look. So I'm just going to kind of dab it on, you know, how cement, um, how cement looks. So whether that'll work or not, I'm not sure. But, you know, it's everything's a process. Go ahead and add another hue of color. So I'm just taking a makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree store and then I'm just using a little bit of the coal fusion paint just to add a little more texture. You know, as I always say, you just keep working on a project till you love it. So if you have to add or you have to take away your color, you just play with it until you're happy with it. I told y'all I cannot pass up a aged terracotta pot <laughs> at all. Now when I do look for them, I try to make sure that they're not cracked or they don't have really terrible chippage because that's what happens if you leave them out in our Michigan weather. They will crack and become very brittle. But yes, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna add one inside of here. So I, I am amazed that I still have room for some more decor. I love just all those pops. So I have a couple of these stems from. Hobby Lobby, I love that they're all bunched together, and I think one will do it. I don't think I'm going to need the two, but why it's 40% off, you know, you kind of always pick, I don't know about you all, but I seem to always buy my greenery in pairs. Now I wanted to add a little bit more blue color to my little birdie. So I have some of this gilding paste that <laughs> I've had it for so long um, that it's dried up. But it's kind of nice because I just use the pieces like chalk <laughs> and it and it stays on. So it should be moist and wet. But for whatever reason, as time went on, it just kind of hardened. So I'm just kind of rubbing it, like I said, like chalk on this piece. I just, that blue almost matches the blue of the birdcage itself. And then I have another one that is the rust color. Now I have new bottles of this if I want it to be a little bit wetter. Um, and I get those at the Painted Heirloom also. But yes, for this one, I'm going to add a little bit of the rust to it too, just to go with the pot color. And I still feel like the white is a little too blendy, so I'm just going to get out that antiquing glaze, the fusion one, and just give this birdie a little bit of dirtiness. That'll tie it in with the salvage pieces. It'll tie it in with the um, color of the pot. Oh, I love the patinas underneath this. Well, so much for taking the metal piece off that little salvage piece because now it the birdie doesn't fit. The birdie looks awkward. It just, it does not work. <laughs> so that's what I said. Sometimes your vision isn't always the same, but the birdie does fit down there. It's that, you know, the terracotta pot goes wider towards the top. So that's why it didn't work out. So back to my stash I go to see what else I have. 
Isn't that what our stash is for? To be used up. So it's nice to have these. Now this came in an auction haul that we got. Um, so I don't think I need to do anything to it. I like that dark brown. And the dark brown sitting behind the birdie is really going to make the birdie even pop more. But I need to take this little metal screw off so it sits flat. <music> So thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think? What was your favorite item that I made over today? Yes, just some terracotta pots added into some random bird cages, some terrariums, some odds and ends to make a bird cage like terrarium. I just absolutely love the patinas. I love taking all those finds and just changing them up a bit and showing you how you can Put them together and make the cutest little displays. Oh my gosh. Give me a quick comment down below. Which technique I used today was your favorite? Which item I made over was your favorite? And have I got you looking at secondhand finds in a new way? So again, thanks for watching today's video. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out this channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what I'm up to. Bye!